All right, so this uh, first section, as I mentioned, we're going to discuss really why uh, Jotform is such a great tool and how you can use it for your business to grow. So if you've, if you've owned a business for a while, you're uh, involved in marketing of a business, you probably can relate to a lot of these um, challenges relating to web marketing. Um, ultimately, you spend a lot of time writing content, doing social media, paying for um, CPC ads, banner ads, all this stuff. And really, what is it ultimately um, focused on? It's focused on driving people to your website in the hopes that they will find your website useful and then convert into a prospect or hopefully a paying customer uh, with the minimal amount of work on your part. So as you can see, just as a simple diagram, but there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things that have to go right um, in order for it to all work. And we live in an increasingly um, personal, uh, depersonalized culture. And people are really wanting to come to your website and they're wanting to interact with you on a non-personal basis whenever possible. If any of you have children, you know that um, the youngest generation is really interested in uh, text messaging, social media, but um, you know, picking up the phone and calling a business and asking for information really isn't something that um, is too popular these days. So you want to structure your website so that when people land on that landing page or homepage, they can uh, interact with you as simply as possible. The challenge with that is that it really relies on, on your ability to provide them effective calls to action. And calls to action um, rely on, obviously, uh, a really well-structured uh, web form. Now, unfortunately, web forms start to get into a technical um, discussion, and a lot of times, uh, depending on what form technology you've used, you know that they can break, and there's always issues. And honestly, there's nothing worse than spending a lot of time and money to drive business to your website, and then customers can't even interact with you in, uh, by means of a web form. So let's look at why web forms are particularly challenging. In a, simple, a very simple example, let's say that you have a new, an idea for a new landing page. Um, let's say that you come up with a new white paper, for example, and you feel that this white paper would be very good um, to drive new, um, new leads uh, who are converting from visitors to leads on your website. In order for that to work, typically people will put that, web, uh, that white paper behind a web form. And um, in order for, to access it, they'll have to fill out the form and then be redirected to a thank you page. Well, this sounds like an easy, uh, easy enough project. Unfortunately, a lot of times you have to do a lot of the upfront work, of course, writing the white paper, creating the uh, web page, writing the content, the blog content that creates the buzz. And that's, that's what you do best as a marketer. Unfortunately, the, uh, the web form can be a little bit sticky to deal with. Um, in, in some cases, if you have a, a dedicated in-house IT department, they may want to have full control over those web forms, and so um, you want to you have to interact with a with an IT department. Or um, if you're using a plugin or something else, maybe it it um, it doesn't natively support a white paper, and you have to do a lot of R and D testing to make the redirections work properly and make sure that the code is clean. And then ultimately, once you get the the uh, web page created the form really has to look nice. It has to agree with the uh, mobile responsiveness that you, you, you um, desire to achieve. It has to um, graphically look nice and, um, and be appealing. And so sometimes um, those in your IT department or IT consultants may have one opinion about what looks nice, perhaps from a coding standpoint. As a marketer, you may have a completely different opinion. You want something that's um, really elegant and uh, has modern styles. And, and it's really just a beauty is, the, is in the eye of the beholder at that point. So you, get in, you can get into disagreements um, as to what, what the form should actually look like. And I alluded to um, one of the more common ways that even small, especially small business owners, um, will set up forms is by using a plugin. Now, of course, uh, most of the, as, we, as we all know, most of the websites these days are powered by WordPress. And um, in order to... In order to create a web form for WordPress, most people turn to a plugin on the plugin marketplace. Uh, and I've personally used several of these. 
And the problem with, with plugins is, sure, they're free. Um, they're probably relatively painless to set up. But I, I found that every time a plugin, update, a plugin updates, there's always stuff that breaks. And there's nothing, you know, having a form break is one of the most frustrating things for marketers because it just, you spend all this time developing, um, creating a strategy, and then you've got to go and fix uh, web forms on 30 different landing pages. It's very distractive to your marketing program. The second option that's very common are custom coded forms. And again, this gets back to if you're using an IT department or you have an IT consultant who is an expert at building um, HTML forms. Um, you know, of course, you can you can work with that person to create something that looks very nice. Um, on the flip side of that, anytime something breaks, you're going to have to turn back to that IT consultant to fix the form, troubleshoot it, and then during that um, during that troubleshooting phase, of course, you're uh, losing out on business because people are unable to um, interact with your website as as a lead. And then finally, a very common, increasingly popular um, option is a web to lead form. A lot of CRMs that are out there offer these, and there are some that are really great. Um, but the, the challenge with them is that they're they're primarily usually they're usually structured to um, collect basic information like first name, last name, email address, and when you get into more advanced um, redirection things like you know if you want it, like the back to that example we wanted to do a white paper, it starts to get more uh, complicated. Also, some uh, CRMs will put a limit on the number of uh, forms that you can create and so if you're on a free plan or a lower cost plan then you have to make the decision well do I really want to upgrade my CRM package just to get uh, additional web forms so as you can see there's really it for somebody that's not really too technically minded all of this kinda just sounds like a big cloud of confusion and it's it's really just like isn't there sh it, surely there's a solution out there that can just make all of these uh, options uh, less relevant now across those three options that we talked about, there seem to be several common issues that seem to pop up. Obviously design limitations, we talked about that back and forth that can happen between IT and, and marketing. Um, the second one I've listed here, unreliable alerts. This is actually one that I've experienced many times. Um, for some reason, let's say that the you're using a plugin um, and the, the form plugin stops sending email alerts to you every time a lead fills out a web form. Well, this is tremendously distracting. If that's your only way to rely on, uh, that's your only way to receive lead notifications, not getting a notification, not, not getting an email is, is disastrous for your business. And so um, there could be days that go by and people are asking for information and then that lead has already moved on to the next supplier of, of whatever whatever it is that you provide them. Uh, next, you know, troubleshooting browsers that, you know, there's dozens and dozens of different browser and uh, device combinations, depending on what machine you're using, what browser, um, whether or not it's responsive. So troubleshooting all of those different combinations really creates a lot of unnecessary back and forth and really is counterproductive to the marketing initiatives. So resource problems, what I mean by that is whenever a web page is loaded, obviously there are certain resources that have, have to be also loaded. Um, those could be images, they could be text, they could be JavaScript files. Um, you know, a web form is no different. And so when you start loading up your site with a ton of different plugins, things can start to slow down and bog down the effectiveness of your site, which provides a negative browsing experience for customers. And it also affects your uh, search engine optimization in a negative way. We talked about uh, forms not being friendly to mobile um, back in the design limitations and uh, the IT headaches that that creates. Um, I'd also like to point out some of the integration problems that are out there. Um, if you're using a custom coded solution, then that means that you're gonna have to create custom coded integrations to your CRM, to your email marketing system, um, to your um, internal communication chatting system. So there's a lot of uh, considerations you need to, to uh, factor in whenever you're deciding. You know, are we are we only wanting to receive email notifications, or are we going to want to funnel these leads into something else and use that data in a different way? A custom coded solution is really probably the worst option for uh, an integrated approach. 
Um, plugins, again, it really depends on the plugins developer and whether or not an API can be connected to the software that you're using. And then finally, uh, broken redirects. You know, anytime a form is filled out, it usually redirects either to a thank you page or a pop-up window that says, hey, thanks for uh, filling out a web form. And I've seen many times where, um, back to the plugin issue, whenever a plugin gets updated, for some reason something breaks, and then you have to go through and troubleshoot every single form that you've ever created. Tremendously disruptive and just a real big distraction for your marketing and your IT departments. So let's get into the fun stuff. Let's see how JotForm uh, attempts to solve these problems. In my opinion, there's four big ways that JotForm solves many of the headaches associated with traditional web forms. First of all, it's tremendously easy to use. As I mentioned in the introduction of myself, I've had to learn kind of the basics of HTML and, and uh, basic code stuff. But as you can probably tell by me talking, I'm not um, somebody that studied this in college. I'm a marketer. And so as a marketer, it's very comforting to know that I can pop into JotForm, create a nice little form, and then it works beautifully. And I never have to really, you know, get a developer involved with the process. Second of all, it's tremendously easy to access. Um, it's, it's completely cloud-based, so I don't have to, um, you know, log into WordPress and monkey around with um, some back-end stuff that I, I can't even remember where it is. I just log into JotForm. I, I can, you know, copy, clone. I can do all kinds of cool stuff um, simply by logging in either on my computer or now I know with JotForm 4.0 you can do it on the go with your mobile device. Also, it's, it's great that, you know, in the probably three or four years I've used JotForm, I can, I can count on a couple fingers how many times I've ever had anything really break. And mo usually it was something that I did um, that I just didn't catch in my quality control process. You know, JotForm, day in and day out, it performs. And um, you never really have to worry about whether or not a plugin update is going to break something. And finally, it's budget friendly. You know, um, in reality, JotForm is competing with some of those free plugins that I mentioned. And so they do offer a free package that um, many of my clients have, have started out with. As you grow your business, as you grow your inbound uh, marketing presence, then naturally your JotForm subscription can increase as well. All of this really has led to JotForm becoming the premier solution for um, web-based form building. If you look at uh, JotForm's website, there's some pretty compelling statistics that uh, I thought I would just point out here. Since 2006, JotForm has grown its user base to exceed 2 million users. That's a pretty awesome number. And um, those 2 million users have used JotForm to build over 8 million hosted forms. And when I say hosted forms, again, JotForm is a cloud-based solution. So instead of the form being hosted on your server, it's actually hosted on JotForm server. And then, um, as we'll see later on in the training, uh, JotForm gives you a, a JavaScript or an iframe that you can just use in your code. And then that immediately populates on the live web page. So JotForm is actually hosting the forms you build. And finally, there's been over 200 million forms submitted. As we'll learn a little bit later on, there's a, a lot of templates that are really great that you can use. Um, JotForm supports a lot of different languages. And so this makes the forms really engaging and it gives people a lot of compelling reasons to trust the forms that they see being provided to them uh, by the JotForm users. So here's a quick recap of what we've discussed so far. As you know, marketing is all about ROI. And JotForm helps you really deliver those results to yourself, to your business, or to your client. We're going to see how that plays out later on, especially some, some of the marketing automation features that are out there. But trust in the fact that millions of users don't lie, and they're using JotForm for a reason. By using JotForm, you're in great company, and I really think you're going to like the tool. So let's now take a look at how you can start using JotForm today to improve your marketing.